I'm Peter Block here at ACC 2019 in New Orleans. With me is Mark Monaca from the University of Colorado. Uh, Mark has been working with, say it again, Mark. Declare to me 58. No, 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 not that, the drug, because I want to say it right. Dapagliflozin. I always say dapagliflozin, but <laughs> whatever it is, Mark and I have decided we don't really care. But dapagliflozin is now sort of the hot drug for diabetes, Mark. The question I'm going to start you out with is, uh, why is this such a great drug? It's a great question. You know, these were drugs that were initially designed to lower hemoglobin A1C, so to prevent microvascular complications in patients with diabetes. But we've learned now through three different trials that they actually have very important benefits on outcomes like cardiovascular death, heart failure, and uh, progression of renal disease, renal complications. And so we now know that uh, there's more to this drug class than just lowering glucose, um, and these benefits are very important for patients with diabetes. Yeah, this is sort of like the statins for diabetes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, <clears throat> right now we're talking about the, the TIMI trials, so uh, tell me about the trial specifically. This is a peripheral arterial disease trial, and uh, dapagliflozin does or does not do a good job with that, so I'm not gonna take the the wind out of your sails. Tell me what we found and what the trial's about. Yeah, so Declare to Me 58 was actually a very broad population, over 17,000 patients, including patients with established cardiovascular disease and primary prevention. Overall, uh, last year at AHA, Dr. Wiviat presented the overall results where there was a significant reduction in CV death and heart failure and renal complications, and uh, both in primary and secondary prevention. At this meeting, there are three important subgroups that are being presented patients with a history of heart failure, patients with prior myocardial infarction, and patients with peripheral artery disease. And I think the top line message from these three subgroups is the same. While the drug works the same for everyone in relative, relative risk reduction sense, that these subgroups are at higher risk of CV death and heart failure and renal complications, and the absolute benefits in these high risk subgroups are even greater. Got it, so these are really high risk patients. Yes. And because you get the same delta, you get a lot of improvement. Exactly. Okay. So. Uh, Leon, dapagliflozin then gets an A for being a great drug. Um, for the folks out there who are taking care of patients with diabetes and peripheral arterial disease particularly, uh, what's the strategy that you would recommend? What's the take home message here? Well, you know, I think for all of these high risk patients, I take a very holistic view of their risk uh, and the different therapies that are gonna benefit them. And I think for patients with diabetes, particularly those that have heart failure, prior MI, uh, other high-risk subgroups that these drugs have very important benefits and we should be thinking about them early. Um, I think the benefits also translate to primary prevention populations, although the absolute risk reductions may be smaller. Um, you know, there are uh, always different therapies to think about uh, and different risks, but I think these should be an early consideration for these high-risk subgroups. Yeah, that would be my take. Dapagliflozin yeah. early, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.